right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeline, your CRM, coming to you from, well, actually a little bit of a rainy San Diego today. And I am joined just up the road in LA by Beverly Bev K. How are you doing, uh, Bev? And I I'm sure it's just as rainy up there today, is it? You know, right now the sun is out, but an hour ago there was a hail, actually oh hailstorm. Hail right. Storm, my goodness. Right. Wow. Yeah, that reminded me of that. Uh, that reminds me when I lived in Virginia, we had a hailstorm one time that lasted for about half an hour and it was golf ball size hailstones. Wow. And just, and oh, it did, it did a damage to one of my cars, it did damage to houses. Oh, all the houses on our street, everybody got brand new siding after it. So the whole, the, the whole neighborhood got an upgrade. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it was wow. interesting. All right. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about Bev's book that is just been released in its sixth edition. That's quite amazing. Sixth edition. Love them or lose them. Getting good people to stay. Um, so let me just start off, Bev, right? If a book hits a sixth edition, it's it's delivering a message that people really, really need to hear. And obviously, you know, tactics and strategies that, that, are, that are very, very useful and proven to be useful. So when you went back originally, when you wrote this book, the first edition, what was the aim of the book? And then tell me, how has it gathered the momentum to where now it's at a, in its sixth edition? Well, it's a great question, and not many books hit the sixth edition, and I don't think many authors live to do their sixth yeah. edition. But, uh, in, in fact, in fact, just to put this in some context, I mean, you have uh, over eight hundred thousand copies sold uh, around the world. And um, just to put that in context for people, is most business books are considered an okay success or decent success if they sell about four thousand. Right. So just put just put the success of Bev's book into into perspective Thank here. Thank you. So you know, the answer is, I, I guess I didn't realize it at the time, but the ideas are evergreen. Mm -hmm. And you know, when it first came out, um, the McKinsey had just published their War for Talent. And in it was a famous phrase that said, people don't leave organizations, they do leave managers. Uh -huh. And everybody was reciting that line and repeating it, but nobody was saying, so managers, here's what you do. And the generic words, support your people, be kind to your people, <laughs> how? Yeah. So my co-author and I wrote the how, and Excellent. we wrote it several times, and we wanted it to be a good book for a busy manager mm -hmm. who was rushed and overloaded like I am right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so we were trying to think of how to make it easy, and after a couple of you know, bad tries, we decided to see if we could take all our data and match it to a letter of the alphabet. Right. And we papered a room with the alphabet and we said, what could be the A and what could be the B? Wow. And lo and behold, we found something that was uh, uh, driven by data that we could fit to the entire alphabet hardest was the z yeah i'm sure but we figured that out mm -hmm. and i think what kept it alive is that you know the 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 alphabet stayed the same yeah still a through z the same <laughs> words but the way that we talk about it um ties into the surround sound going on around the globe so what so what is um what are some of the the key things that even today like you're in a sixth edition what are some of the things that even today managers are maybe overlooking or not doing properly that's continuing to cause these you know turnover issues so um without naming 
the 26 because they're yeah. all good. I could get excited yeah. about any of them. And without naming the managers too. Right. <laughs> right. But we, um, we were trying to think of how do we teach this? Because mm -hmm. I had a big training organization and we realized that they fell into distinct clusters mm -hmm. that an engagement focused manager, a talent focused manager did three things. They number one, grew their people, developed their people. And there were six or seven chapters, practices that fit into that. Number two, they built relationships consciously with each one of their direct reports. And there were six or seven chapters of the alphabet that fit there. And thirdly, they, um, they built a culture that people wanted to come to and live in. And mm -hmm. there are six or seven chapters. So when we teach it, we teach it around those clusters. And then we found there were four letters of the alphabet that really fit into all of them. Right. And so those became our success drivers. And they were the A, the B, the N, and the Z. And A was ask. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess if you said, what one chapter does everything rest on? It might be the A for ask. Right. Ask, how you doing, ask. And I'll, I'll say more about that. Yeah. Um, the second was B for buck. It stops with you. Yep. Not 100% of the time, but a lot of the time. N is for numbers. If you doubt how important this is, just run the numbers. And for a sales team and great salespeople, you know how costly it is to lose one of them. Mm -hmm. And the fourth was the Z, and Z stood for Zenith. And ah. meaning it's never done. You mm -hmm. don't just reach the zenith. You have to keep at it and at it and at it. So mm -hmm. um, for sales managers, retaining your talent, nourishing your talent, recognizing your talent, thanking your talent is like mm -hmm. crucial. Yeah, and one of the things one of the things that always interests me, uh, Bev, is um, when when sometimes when people think, okay, you know, create a place where people want to be in a company that they want to be with, and all. And sometimes people get confused into thinking that that's all the gimmicky stuff. You know, the way like Silicon Valley, uh, and I worked in Silicon Valley they used to think, oh, well, you know, we put in pool tables and massage room and all this kind of stuff. And that's what makes for a great company. But those things wear thin very fast if the underlying culture isn't one that actually supports people in a, in a proper way. And not just supports people because it's not about pandering either. It's also challenging people. Right. And, and challenging them in the right ways, mm -hmm. challenging the men around their own learning and their growth. Um, it, it is that, and it's learning what challenges you. Yeah. Like, John, when you are really challenged in, in leading an organization, I know what that's like. I've led one for 40 years. What's the biggest challenge? Oh, in leading an organization, the, the biggest, well, for me, the biggest challenge is always, is always um, it's people and it's communication and it's getting everybody on the same page. And I think the biggest lesson, certainly the biggest lesson I learned um, when I was leading organizations is that the, you can't broadcast communication. I mean, you can, you know, you can put out whatever, but then you need to, you need to communicate to people differently. Different people receive information in different ways. And if you don't do that and you just communicate in one way, you end up, yeah, you'll get your message through to a segment of your organization, but not to everybody. Right, right, right. So it's understanding that everybody has their own unique um, um, things that grab them and frustrate mm -hmm. them and things that delight them. You know, even yeah. asking a salesperson, what was the best part of yesterday for you? Mm -hmm. Is giving you data, you know, is giving you great data. 
um, what client made you smile? You know, instead of <laughs> and asking that one too. Right, right. What yeah, no, absolutely. Client, did you say? I never want to do this again. Uh, after meeting with, what about it? What frustrated you? Let's you, the manager, know more about that salesperson and um, what makes them tick. And and Bev, I mean, clearly, uh, this has become even more important over the last year or so because, let's face it, a lot of organizations have been forced to go virtual in a way that they weren't before. We were lucky. We, we've been a virtual organization by choice for a long time, and, and, and we developed how to do that well. But a lot of organizations, obviously, were doing this for the first time. And then a lot of people were at home or, you know, uh, for the first time. So there was huge disconnects and people feeling isolated. So this really underlines what you're talking about in terms of the communication, the asking, the developing the relationships. I mean, it's it's become more critical than ever to reach out and, and really, you know, make make your people feel like, yeah, you're not alone. Right, right. And, and you know, um, one thing I'll give you and you'll have to remind me is, Mm -hmm. something that all of your listeners can pass out to other managers is 26 ways to check in with your remote people. Oh, excellent. What I started hearing from managers is, you know, I'm not that comfortable. I, I, I want to know the numbers, numbers, numbers. I don't know how to ask those other questions. And, you know, sometimes it's um, whatever you're taught about selling to a customer. I, your manager, have to sell you on our relationship. That's and a great point. That's a great point. Uh, it's such a smart point there, Beverly. Um, yeah, that, uh, so, so in reality, when somebody says, well, I'm not comfortable, I don't really know how to do that, you're saying, well, actually, you're a sales manager, and I presume you've been a salesperson, so you absolutely know how to do this. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And, and it's hard because I would think a sales manager, you're carrying a load or a sales mm-hmm. per, It's, am I going to make my numbers? And I know that because I had my own sales team. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, and it's, it, it, it's a tough job. It's, it, it's a very, very, it's a very, very tough job. And I think what you're saying is uh, also is, um, is that a lot of the things that you can do to get your team engaged and to get your people like, you know, rallying around thing. These are, these are pretty simple things. They're not complex things. They may, but remember simple doesn't always equate with easy because you have to do them. You have to do them properly and you have to do them consistently. And I guess the biggest thing of all is you have to do them authentically. Right. Right. And you know, your talent knows when you're not authentic. And, you know, it's interesting um, So, because we, we teach this in organizations around the world. And in the days when I taught it, because now I don't teach it so much as keynote it, but I re- there was always a manager who said, I could never do that. If I asked my employee that question, they would say, what book did you just read? And my answer was always, tell them you read a book. Tell right. them it was on page 12 and you read it. <laughs> Because you don't want to lose them. Just tell the truth. And it, what? I never thought of that. That's, such a, that's a great point, Bev. I'm glad you brought that. That is such a great point. Because, yeah, uh, as you said, like we, you know, being in leadership positions, sometimes when people get into leadership positions, they, 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 they get trapped in this idea that they should know everything. And so, therefore, if I'm talking to you about something, I should already know it, rather than saying as you just pointed out, just saying, you know, I was reading this fascinating book the other day because I'm trying to improve on my on, yeah. on my communication and I came across this. So I just wanted to talk to you about it. Therefore, what does that do in a relationship between two people immediately? Well, it bonds them, it bonds them. And, and you know, what I say, and I'll say to your uh, uh, listeners, here's the easiest retention engagement conversation you can have. Um, buy the book or copy out the table of contents from somebody (laughs) else's book, show your employee the table of contents, 26 things, and say to them, which two of these do you wish I would do more? 
Mm. That's it. And go back and read those two chapters and practice it. So yeah. that is like, should be a fairly easy. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and you're doing what you're doing there is you're actually you're you're co-opting the person and you're and it's becoming somewhat of a partnership because you're saying right. pick out the things that you'd like me to do more of like these two things and uh, and then I'll go off and figure them out I'll try. and then I guess and I guess then the the implicit in that is okay if I'm going to do this you're going to you're going to deliver on your end right and or maybe the deliver is just let me know when I do let me know right, yeah. doing a good job, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, and I don't mean to make it baby stuff, but I do mean to make it easy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I agree with you. I, I don't think it is babies. I mean, I think these are very, I think this is very practical advice because as you said, um, a lot of people struggle with this. And, and, and as I said earlier on, you know, the biggest challenge is, is a, is a, everybody's different right right, right. <laughs> and what i want to learn as a manager is what's different about you yeah yeah you know, no. is and how do you like to be led mm -hmm. and when i lead you in a way that is distasteful tell me mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think that's a, a yeah exactly. And I think that's a getting getting that um, feedback loop. Um, but like I said, some people when they hear stuff like this will worry about okay, if I spend too much time, um, am I am I pandering? Am I like focused on? I'm always trying to like you know please them even you know. And but but what you're saying here, this doesn't mean that you accept poor performance. This doesn't mean that you accept um you know anything like right. that that you're still there is an expectation uh there's there is that expectation two-way expectation that yeah i'm going to do everything i can to support you but in return you got to deliver yeah absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what are what are some other things? Is, is there anything else that has particularly cropped up uh, due to our current circumstances that uh, that you have oh, spent more time talking about? It's interesting. Different chapters have become bigger mm -hmm. during COVID, like um, in relationships. Um, one of the things people want, I hear more than ever, is information. Right. You know, don't leave me out. Tell me, are we going to go back? Are we not going to go back? Is only some of us going to go? You know, because I, I never got enough information when I was there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm never there. <laughs> and I'm really missing information. So that like jumped. Yeah. And um, the just just on, on just on that one, because I think that's a really incredibly important one, because, yeah, is um, I think more than ever, people need to have information. And and it's not like you have to give them everything, because what I used to use this as my rule of thumb, Bev, as I used to always say to people, um, if you need to, I mean, I, I will tell you everything I can. But if you need to know something, ask me a question, I will I will give you an honest answer. Either I'll give you an honest answer because I can or I won't give you an answer because I can't because I don't have that information or I'm not allowed uh, allowed to give it to you or as I said either that or I simply don't know and I have to go away and find it but those those are the three answers you're going to get from me either I'm going to give you a straight answer or I'm going to tell you I can't tell you that and the reasons why I can't tell you that or I'm going to say I don't know and I'll go off and find out and then the trust level goes up hmm. um He's an eye I can trust. He's going to either say it or not say it. He's not going to BS me. Yeah, yeah, because I used to, you know, the, when people would ask you, I mean, it's like when maybe there were times when you would go through difficulties with an organization and there'd be restructuring and somebody would say like, oh, does this mean, you know, there may be layoffs and you go, I don't know. Um, that's a possibility. I'm hope that that's not the case, but I'm not going to say that it's absolutely not going to be the case either. And I think people respect that so much more than if you try and fluff things. Right, right, right. Because they see right through it. Yeah. Right. Through and then if you turn around and do something that you said you weren't going to do, then it's just it's much better if you said maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. It depends on the circumstances. Right. You know, I'm going to try not to, but I right. can't rule anything in or out. Exactly. 
Yeah. What was the other one you said, the other chapter that loomed larger during the pandemic? Uh, you know, um, I, I can't remember what I was thinking of then, but right now, the, the one that comes to mind is the J chapter. Mm. And um, it looms big now. J is for jerk. Don't be one. <laughs> and when we first wrote the book back in 1999, we said to our publisher, the J is going to be for jerk. And the publisher said, can't you not have that word? It's a negative word. Mm -hmm. And we said, it has to be. It has to be. Because mm -hmm. what we did was we took uh, uh, exit interviews and we followed the person who wrote it to the next company. And we said, we have your exit interview here. You said, blah, blah, blah. Is that why you really left? And almost to a person, they said, no, I left because my boss was a jerk. Mm. And as good interviewers, we said, well, what exactly do you mean by the word jerk? And they gave us a good long list of jerkitudinal characteristics. <laughs> jerkitudinal. I love that. I'm going to keep that one. Can I? And, <laughs> um, and we publish them in the book and we talk about them in our workshops and um and we get managers to own up to, you know, have I done some of these? And, and, mm. and how am I a jerk to you? Because mm. I don't want to be. Because, boy, I, I love how you deal with customers. And I love how you're making your area, you're growing your area, et cetera. And I don't want to lose you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to want those behaviors. Yeah. I was going to say, and on the flip side of that, if you're if you're an employee and you go from job to job, and every time you go to a new job, your boss is a jerk. Um, and you and, might look. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was going to say because it's interesting. Some uh, I remember somebody was saying one time they were they were leaving a job and they were saying, "Oh, you know, I'm leaving here because you know people here are this, that, and the other, or whatever." And and the other person said, "Oh, yeah, where are you going?" And said this other company, and he goes, "Oh, I bet you the people are the exact same over there." Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but that's a fascinating thing because I mean, I think sometimes, um, I mean, going back to the jerk thing, I mean, you know, when managers and that, when they're under pressure or whatever, I mean, we don't always realize what we're doing. We always don't. What was your, what did you say? We don't always, uh, our, our jerk tutudinal. What was that? Jerk tutudinal <laughs> behaviors, right? Yeah, yeah. We don't always know. We don't always recognize them ourselves. Right, right. And, you know, when we teach it, the way we get into it is we say to managers, um, have you ever had a jerk boss? Mm. And which of these characteristics did they display? And then we say, and what did that do to you? And your abilities and your, you know, your everything. And they say, well, I pulled back. I didn't get my ideas. I didn't trust. I didn't. And then we say, now take a look, which ones do you think you do? A little right. bit. And we have a great conversation about that. Well, what I love, what I love about this, uh, Bev, about everything in your book and about what we're talking about now is uh, I'm, I talk a lot about self-awareness because I think the self-awareness is the greatest gift that you can give to yourself. And it's very liberating and it can really help you not just in your career, but in your personal life as well. But self-awareness is tough. It's it's you have to go on that journey. And you know, and, and I'm not saying saying here is somebody who saying, oh well, you know, I figured this out a long time ago. I wish I'd figured it out sooner, to be honest. Um, but I certainly recognize today that self-awareness is so, so critical and it really does um, open open up a lot of opportunities for you. And this is a lot of what you're talking about here in your it book, is, is really is. helping people become self-aware. Right, right, right. And, and do something about it. Yes, you know? yeah, true. Yes, there's no point in becoming self-aware. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than the person who goes, oh, well, you know what I'm like. Right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> That's a typical comment. Right, right. Yeah, and, and the answer is, sure, but guess what? You don't have to be like that. <laughs> right, right, is it, right. If it's not serving you. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Good, good. Um, so as we finish up, Bev, have any, um, is there anything else? Uh, is there anything else that's uh, uh, about this new sixth edition that you just wanted to tell people about? You no, know, um, 
that it's those chapters are evergreen. And you know, when we wrote this particular book, the publisher said, show me the link in every chapter between engagement and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And we are not diversity specialists. So sure. we went to a lot of our colleagues who are thought leaders, authors, and I showed them the 26 chapters. And I said, can you pick five that are most crucial to inclusion? belonging, whatever the pop word was. And I thought, whoa, we're going to get a great piece of research out of this. Mm -hmm. All of them named a different five. And what my co-author and I said was, duh, you know, it's through whose eyes? It's through my eyes that I say that sparks belonging or inclusion. And that mm -hmm. one does. And they all had big arguments for the five they chose, but it convinced us that they all, yeah. if you if you engage, you include. Yeah. If you include, you engage. Yeah, no, I, I think you're 100% correct. And I think the danger sometimes is that, you know, we try to, you know, go down into niches here and say, like, let's look at the inclusion. When in fact, what you're talking about in your book is if you do all of these things and if you do them properly, you should be engaging and people should yeah. feel engaged, yeah. they should feel included. And you don't have to necessarily do a, an inclusion um, project seminar. or initiative right. or seminar because basically these are truisms that hold right. for everyone. Right. And they're management basics, they're management mm -hmm. development 101. <laughs> Some of our clients teach it when they're onboarding new managers, you know, right. and it's a great management 101. Yeah, text. Fantastic. Well, fantastic, Bev. Thank you so much for talking to me today. And I highly recommend that people check out the book, Love Them or Lose Them, uh, Getting Good People to Stay, sixth edition just released. Hey, listen, come on, 800,000 people can't be wrong. So really, uh, I think it's a, it's a book that you should check out. And as you've heard from what we've been talking about, I mean, this could make the difference between you hanging on to the best of the best or losing them to your competition. Right. Um, so Bev, all of Bev's information is going to be below the video. But before we go, Bev, do you want to tell people a little more about yourself? Sure. Uh, um, I've been doing this for for decades and I still am passionate about what I do and I I like being deceptively simple mm -hmm. I like giving I know how crazed and busy any especially sales managers are huh? and um I just want to I want to make people read something or listen to me in the keynote and say, I can do that. I never thought of that. Um, and so that's my, my mission. I uh, love it. Um, so again, thank you so much, uh, Beverly, Beverly K. The book again is Love Them or Lose Them, Getting Good People to Stay. Available from all good bookstores, Amazon, Kindle, audiobook, uh, paperbacks, the whole, the whole nine yards. Um, my name is John Golden. I will see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you for watching and listening.